Okay, so we are going to go over this. So what is your trend for atomic radius going down a group? Increase. Increase going down and going across it? Decrease. Decrease. All right, so that's what you should have for that first line. All right. Um, we are going over yesterday's worksheet. All right, so then for number one, number one, you are going to be, let me do this. Okay, let's do this. All right, so for number one, you are looking at these two elements and you are going to pick out the larger atomic radius. So this is going to be the questions that are going to be on your quiz tomorrow for the trends. You're gonna have questions about atomic radius. This is what they're gonna be like, all right? I'm going to give you a couple of elements and you have to tell me either what is the largest radius or what is the smallest radius. So for number one, we have fluorine or bromine. So fluorine is, they're both in column 17. Fluorine is at the top. Bromine is at the bottom. So looking down our group, our trend is going to increase. So which one has the larger radius? Bromine. So bromine has the larger one of those two. And then we have potassium or neon. So potassium is in group one, neon is in group 18, but potassium is further down. So we have to look at both of our trends. So we have to look at increasing going up, sorry, decreasing going across. So if it's decreasing going across and we want the larger one, do we want the one on the left-hand side or the right-hand side? Left-hand side. So which is on the left-hand side? Potassium. So potassium is your bigger one. All right. And then put the following elements in order by increasing, so that's smallest to largest, atomic radius. So you want the smallest one first. So you have oxygen, which is in group 16. You have gallium, which is in group 13. And then you have magnesium, which is in group two, okay? And then your oxygen and your magnesium Oh, they're all in different levels. So they're all in different levels and they're all in different columns. So what you have to do is you have to look at both of your trends, but is there one trend that kind of sticks out more? So what you have to look at is your gaps or where your elements are spaced out. Are they spaced out further across the periodic table or are they spaced out further up and down the periodic table? So these three, are spaced out more across. They're only in different periods by like one or two. So they're very close together looking up and down, but they're very far apart looking across. So we're gonna look at our trend going across the period more than our trend looking down the group. So if we want the increasing, we want smallest one first. So if we want the smallest atomic radius, are we looking at the left-hand side of the periodic table or the right-hand side of the periodic table? We want the smallest one first, and if our thing is decreasing across the period, do we want the left-hand side or the right-hand side? The right. the right hand side. So which one of these is closer to the right-hand side of the periodic table? Oxygen. Oxygen. So, so oxygen is first. And then which one is in the middle? Which element is in the middle? Gallium. So then gallium is in the middle. And then, which element is on the left-hand side, which would have the largest? Magnesium. So oxygen, gallium, and then magnesium. For B, you have strontium, tin, and iron. So strontium is SR. So SR is on the left-hand side. Tin is SB. So SB is in column 15, so that's on the right-hand side. And then iron is Fe, it's in the middle. So which one would have your smallest atomic radius? 
10, because 10 is to the farthest right. So 10, which is FB. Which one is in the middle? Iron is in the middle. And then which one is on the farthest left? Strontium. So that's odd. So SB. Oh, sorry. What is it? SN. Thank you. That's what's throwing me off. This is not SB. This is SN. All right. So it should be S N F E S R, or you could spell out the elements, whichever one you want to do. All right, for letter C, you have tungsten, francium, and carbon. So tungsten is W. It's one of your transition elements, so it's in the middle. Francium is in the far bottom left hand, and then carbon is in the top, closer to the right hand side of the PR table. So which one has your smallest one? Carbon would be your smallest because it's the farthest to the right on the PR table. Which element is in the middle? Tungsten because it is in the middle of your periodic table. And then which one would have the largest, which would be on the left hand side of the periodic table? Francium. So that is your order for that one. And then someone explain to me why atomic radius decrease as you move from left to right across the period. Yes, ma'am. Because the positive proponent added to the nucleus, the negative electrons feel the greater attraction to the nucleus. Yes, so then your electrons are going to be what? <laughs> what? What are your electrons going to be? Decreasing. Getting smaller. Condensing, yes, or compressing, <laughs> or sucked in. So your, if you are adding, so here, let me show you. So as you move, as you move across the period, more protons are added to the nucleus, creating a greater pull on the electrons. The electrons are getting sucked in closer to the nucleus. So that is what's happening. That is why your radius is getting smaller, because your electrons are getting compressed or sucked in closer to your nucleus. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes. All right. All right. What's next? So, ionic radius. Let's look at ionic radius. All right, so ionic radius. When you are looking at an element and its ion, so the parent element and the ion, what is happening for cations? Is it getting bigger or smaller? Cations are decreasing. And then for anions, what is happening to your radius? Increasing. 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 And then both of them are going to do what as you go down the group? Increase. Increase. Because it has the same trend as your atomic radius. All right. What is an ion? Positive or negative, but why is it positive or negative? Because uh, it has loss or gain of electrons. Yes, so the loss or gain of electrons, why, what is their main goal? Why are they losing and gaining electrons? To have a full valence shell or octet. Yes. All right. So number five, you are looking at these two elements and or ions and you are telling me what is the largest of the two. So you have rubidium and you have rubidium's ion, which is Rb plus one. So which one would be larger? 
RB would be larger because is this a cation or an anion? This is a cation, and our cations decrease, so our parent element would be bigger. For B, you have phosphorus and the ion that it makes. The ion that it makes, what is it? What is it? No, sorry. Is this a cation or an anion? Anion. So which one is bigger? The anion would be bigger because your anions, your radius increases for anions. Yes. All right, this one, we have two ions. We have oxygen and we have, I think that's selenium. They are in the same column. So which one is larger? Yes, ma'am. Selenium negative two is larger because it is further down the column. This one, you have sodium, which is a positive ion, so that's your cation, and you have chlorine, which is a negative ion, that is your anion. So which one is bigger? Chlorine. You think it's chlorine? Yeah. Okay, so sodium ion came from its sodium parent. Which one would be bigger in that situation? The parent element would be bigger in that situation. For chlorine, chlorine ion came from its parent element, which is just chlorine. Which one would be bigger in that situation? The anion would be bigger. So now, if you're just looking at your sodium ion and your chlorine ion, which one would be bigger? The anion. So your anion would be bigger than your cation. So chlorine negative one would be bigger. Huh? Oh. So your chlorine negative one atom would be bigger. All right, so number six, you have this picture. You have an element that is a big circle and you have some ion that is a small circle. So what is happening? What is, what is the relationship between those two circles? What do they represent? Yes, Tanner. The ion B is a more positive ion because it's lost a negative charge. Very good, yes. So this is your parent element. This is your ion, which is smaller. And when does it, when does it get smaller? If it's a cation or an anion? A cation. So B is your cation, and A is your parent element. Right? If this circle was bigger and this circle was smaller, this would be your anion. But this circle is smaller, so that is your cation. So that is your atomic radius and your ionic radius. All right? Is that all the people that has smile? Your quiz only has atomic radius. So that very first question is the type of question that you'll see on your quiz tomorrow. Just the first one. All right, so let's look at the back. So the back is talking about ionization energy, electronegativity, and then reactivity at the bottom. So ionization energy, in general, would you expect metals or nonmetals to have a higher ionization energy? Metals or nonmetals? Metals. Why metals, Tanner? Because metals are less reactive, so they need, they need more ionization. So if metals are, so do metals want to, so metals are in column one, two, and three, right? Do they want to gain electrons or lose electrons? They want to lose electrons. So do you need a lot of ionization energy to take those electrons away from them? No. So what's going to have more ionization energy, your nonmetals or your metals? Non your nonmetals. So nonmetals. So non-metals, I didn't spell that right, because that's one word. So non-metals would have a higher ionization energy because 
they don't want to get rid of their electrons. So it's going to take a lot of energy for you to go and take away those electrons that they do have. So nonmetals want to take electrons. They don't want to get rid of electrons. So it would take more energy to take their electrons away. Something like that. So that you know that non-metals want to gain electrons. They do not want to get rid of electrons. So it's going to take a lot of energy for you to take away their electrons that they do have. All right. So now you have three elements. You need to order them by, in, by decreasing. So you want your largest to smallest. So your largest ionization energy to your smallest ionization energy. So you have sodium, potassium, and chlorine. So first of all, let's look at our trend going across the period. So for ionization energy going across the period, what is happening? Increasing. Increasing. So going across the period, going across the period is going to increase. So if we want the largest one first, we are going to look for the largest one. So we're going to look on the left hand side or the right hand side. The right hand side, because it's increasing going across. So we want to look at the elements that are on the right hand side first. So what element is on the right hand side? Chlorine. Chlorine is on the right hand side. So chlorine would have the largest. And then we have sodium and potassium. They are right above one another. So if they are right above one another, what is the trend when you go down the column? Decrease. So which one is larger? Sodium is larger, so that means that potassium would have the smallest. That's why we're going over it. So chlorine, sodium, and the potassium. All right. Then you have aluminum, carbon, and boron. So again, you want the largest one first. So you're going to find the one that's on the right-hand side of the PR table. So which one of these elements are on the right-hand side? The farthest right. C is on the farthest right-hand side, so carbon is first. And then what is in the middle? Aluminum is in the middle. And then what is the smallest? Wait. Okay, so once you get rid of carbon, once you get rid of carbon, you have boron and then aluminum. So you're looking down the column. So which one is the largest one from those two? Boron. And then aluminum would have the smallest. I try I believe you. Alright. I believe you, Connor. All right, so then we have con um, we have carbon, germanium, and is that ten? S N. What is S N? Sure. All right, so C G E and S N. They are all in the same column, so we are only going to be looking at this trend. So which one has the largest one? The largest one we want first. So which one is it? Carbon. Which one is in the middle? GE. And which one is in the bottom, the farthest to the bottom? SN. So just how it gave you is how you wrote it. And then D, we have CS, which is in the bottom left hand corner. We have ZN, which is zinc, it's a transition metal, so it's in the middle. And then we have oxygen, which is, which is the upper right. So we have to look at both of these. So if we want the largest one first, 
we have to look at the one that's furthest to the right and furthest to the top, which is oxygen. And then which one is in the middle of your periodic table? Zinc is in the middle because it's a transition element. And then which one is the bottom left? Cesium. Cesium. Very good. All right, so this question, why does ionization energy increase going across a period? This is basically the same thing. So I'm not going to rewrite it. I'm just going to do an arrow. It's basically the same question. As you go from the left to right, your elements go from wanting to lose electrons to wanting to gain electrons. So it's going to take more energy to take those electrons away as you move from left to right. Ionization energy? Yeah. Is how much energy is needed to remove electron. Yes. Just know that the right hand side you need more energy. The left hand side you need less. So it's increasing going across. We good on all these? I can erase this. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's look at electronegativity and reactivity. So electronegativity and reactivity. Okay, so you need to look at these three atoms and tell me which one atom or which one element is the most electronegative. So real quick, what is your trend for electronegativity? What is it going across? Increase. Increase. And then decrease going down. All right, so if we want the most electronegative, which corner are we going to be focusing on? Um, top right. We want this one. Top right. All right, so if we have nitrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus, which one is the top right? Oxygen. So oxygen is this one. Again, we have oxygen, but now we have sulfur and selenium. So which one is, so now we just look at this one trend. It's still oxygen because we still want the one that's at the top. So oxygen again. And then, yes, because which is the most electronegative? You want one atom out of those three. So SI, P or S, which one? Sulfur. Sulfur because you are going across. So the one that's to the farthest right. So that's sulfur. All right, now we are ordering them by decreasing. So we want the largest to the smallest, All right? So we have sodium, potassium, and chlorine. So if we want the largest one first, which side of the pair table are we gonna look at? The left-hand side or the right-hand side? The right-hand side. Which one is on the right-hand side? Chlorine is on the right hand side, and now we get rid of chlorine. Now we just have sodium and potassium, which are in the same group. So looking down, which one is going to be bigger? The one on top or the one on bottom? Bottom. 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 Which one is bigger? The one on top or the one on bottom? The one on top. So this one, sodium, is bigger than potassium. So sodium is going to be in the middle, and potassium is going to be last. Right. For B, we have aluminum, carbon, and boron. So that three group. So we want the largest one first. So the largest one is to the furthest left or furthest right. So which one is going to have the largest one? Carbon. Carbon. And then once we get rid of carbon, we have boron, which is in the top, or aluminum, which is in the bottom. Which one of those is bigger? Which one? Boron is bigger than aluminum, so boron would be in the middle, and then aluminum would be last. And then we have CGESN. So C, these are all in the same column. So which one is largest if they're in the same column? The top one, which is carbon. Which one is in the middle? GE. And then which one is the smallest? SN, because it's the one on the bottom. Yeah. All right, last one. 
Cesium is bottom left. Zinc is in the middle. It's a transition element. And then oxygen is the top right. So which one has the largest? Oxygen has the largest. Which one's in the middle? Zn is in the middle. And then Cs. Very good. All right. Number six is asking you which atom is more electronegative. So which one of these two is more electronegative? So fluorine or cesium? Fluorine. Fluorine is always going to be your more electronegative. So if you ever have fluorine in your question, always pick fluorine. Uh, carbon or beryllium? Carbon, because carbon is further to the right and our trend is increasing as we go across. So the one furthest to the right, which is carbon. And then we have AT or CL. Those are in the same column. So if we want the one that's more electronegative, we want the one that's on the top or the bottom? Top. 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 Which one's at the top? CL. And then S or P, they are right next to each other. They're in the same period. We want the one that's further to the right. So we want sulfur. Yes, very good. All right, uh, reactivity. What is the most reactive non-metal? Fluorine is the most reactive non-metal. Fluorine. Because fluorine is in the top right, not including noble gases. So, remember, why do we not include our noble gases when we're talking about reactivity? Because they are not reactive. They have a full shell. They do not want to get rid of electrons. They don't want to gain electrons. So they are not going to be reactive. So this picture over here that I drew is your reactivity uh, trend. Because remember, it's different for metals and nonmetals. But your noble gas column is not participating in your reactivity trend. You stop at group 17. Okay? So this is your trend for metals. As you go across, it decreases, and as you go down, it increases. For non-metals, it's the exact opposite. It increases going across and decreases going down. So for number eight, for these pairs, which is more reactive? So we have lithium or francium. Francium, so lithium and francium are both what? Metals or non-metals? They are both metals, so we're going to look at this trend, and they are both in the same column, so we're only looking at this trend going down the column. So as we go down, it's going to increase, so if we want the more reactive, we're going to look at the one on the bottom, which is francium. Yes. All right, what about SE and oxygen? Why oxygen? Tell me. No, no, they're in the same group. Yes, oxygen. Higher, Wait. You want the top one. Yeah, because it's a non-metal. It's going down. Very good. Yes, so that is oxygen. They are both non-metals. So we're going to look at this trend for non-metals. And they are both in the same group. So we are looking at this arrow. So as we go down, they're going to decrease. So we want the one that's closer to the top. So oxygen is at the top. And then selenium is two spaces down. So oxygen wins. And then we have SR and A, oh, and RA. RA. SR is SR. 38, and then RA is 2 down. So again, are we dealing with metals or non-metals? We're dealing with metals, and we're dealing with two metals that are in the same column. So we're looking at this one. So we want the one that's closer to the top or closer to the bottom? bottom. Closer to the bottom. So that is RA. RA. And then we have fluorine or oxygen. Are these metals or non-metals? Non-metals. Non so we want this one. Are they in either a same column or same period? Same period. So we're looking at this one. So which one do we want? We want fluorine because it's further to the right. Also, fluorine will always win because it's always going to be your most reactive. All right, and that was it. Any questions on that? Awesome. Good job, guys.